Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I am making a super tall and spectacular Toy Story themed cake. I got this idea when I was playing a game called Toy Story Obstacles and Adventures. My kids love to pretend to be the characters, so my cake is themed around our four favorite characters. All right, let's get into it. I've already baked my cakes and I'm starting by leveling and torting each cake. So I'm running my knife along the top edge while turning my turntable. Okay, there we go. This one is confetti cake. And then I'm torting it by doing the same. You score it the first time around and then continue cutting through the center of the cake. To stack the cake, I first put a dab of buttercream frosting on my board to help it stick, and then I move my cake layer over. Using a piping bag, I pipe a buttercream dam around the outer edge of the cake, and then I completely fill it with more buttercream frosting, and I get it nice and smooth. And then I stack the remaining cake and buttercream in the same way. These are 9 inch round cakes, by the way. I do the exact same process for my 11 inch round cakes, my 7 inch round cakes, and finally, my five inch cakes. The buttercream frosting I'm using is my Swiss meringue frosting, which you can find the link to down in the description box. All four cakes get a crumb coat, and then I get them as smooth as I can on the outside by using a bench scraper. I also scrape right along the top edge, pushing the buttercream in towards the center. And then I pop them into the refrigerator to chill. I actually do this smoothing process a bunch of times until I get it perfect. Now that the cakes are smooth, it's time for the fondant. The largest tier is my buzz tier, which is white. This one is Woody, which is yellow. Next is Bo Peep, which is blue. And the top tier is Jessie, which is white. To smooth the fondant, I rub my palm against the cake while opening up the pleats. You carefully start at the top and work your way down the cake. It does take practice to get this. These small cakes are actually the hardest, even though it's little. I use my fondant smoothers to get out any imperfections and then I cut away the excess. Okay, all of my cakes are covered and ready to be decorated. I'm starting with my bottom tier, which is Buzz. I've made myself my own template by sketching the design onto a piece of parchment paper, which I then cut out and placed on top of my fondant. I always get asked for templates, but I don't always keep them because it is so easy to make your own that will fit the size of your own cake. Once I've got my four green sections cut out, I attach them to my cake with shortening. When you use shortening, it doesn't hold as well, but you have the freedom to move the piece around if you need to. For the Space Ranger logo, I got out my big projector. This is made by Copy Cake, and I really love it for projects like this. I've heard there are smaller ones out now, but this one is working for me. You can use gel color mixed with a drop of alcohol for the paint, but this time I'm using paint made by Sweet Sticks. The image in the middle is white, so before I outlined it, I dusted it with white food color powder, and then I outlined it in black. Once I finished painting, I cut it out. It would be best to let this dry before putting it on the cake, which I did not do, and it got a little smudged, but that's okay. I'm adding a few more pieces to Buzz's suit. This tier was pretty quick and easy. Next up is the Woody tier. To create Woody's striped shirt, I'm placing a ruler up against the cake and drawing a line with a red edible marker. I made about eight vertical lines. There's no need to go all around the cake because it will be covered with his vest. To make the horizontal lines, I made a template out of cardstock that matched the size of the ruler, and I used it to draw three horizontal lines. To make Woody's vest, I'm cutting out a strip of fondant and using a moon-shaped cutter to create the curve on each end. I roll up the fondant and then I unroll it onto the cake just like this. The cow print design on Woody's vest is painted on by hand. You really cannot mess up on this painting because it looks very smudgy. Painting is really one of my favorite parts. The vest needs a trim around it, so I'm using a clay extruder to create logs of white and black fondant. And then I twist them together to create a rope. Once I have a few of them made, I attach them to the vest with edible glue. Woody has a few more details. I made a belt buckle, a star-shaped badge, and a couple of buttons. I painted them using my Sweet Sticks paints. It did need a few coats. You just have to wait for the first coat to dry before painting on the next. The buttons were dusted with pearl luster and then painted. Moving on to the next tier, which is Bo Peep themed. Bo Peep's dress has a lacy front section. To make it, I'm using an impression mat made by Wilton. I'm pressing white modeling chocolate into the squiggly line mold and I'm using a mini offset spatula to scrape off the excess. 
Since this is modeling chocolate, it's holding its shape and I can pull it out pretty easily. I made a bunch of these and got them attached to my cake. If you have a lace mold, I actually think that would look better. I just didn't have time to order one. For the next lacy detail, I'm rolling over a piece of fondant with fabric textured rolling pin, and I use a frill cutter to create the scalloped edge. To give it more detail, I'm cutting out little teardrop shapes with an eyelet cutter. And I also get that attached to the cake. On to my Jessie themed tear. This one will get another thin layer of yellow fondant that I've attached with shortening. Using a circle cutter, I cut out half circles in the fondant to give it the same type of edge that Jessie has on her shirt. And then I trim it with a red lug of fondant. Her shirt also has a cute western pattern that is stitched on, so I'm creating that with another lug of fondant. My cakes are mostly decorated and I need to move on to the logo so it has time to dry. What I have here is a sheet of modeling chocolate and I've placed a printed out Toy Story logo on top of it. Using a pointed plastic modeling tool, I'm tracing around the letters. When you lift the paper up, voila, you can see the letters. And then I get all those pieces cut out. Once I have all the letters cut out, I'm transferring all the pieces onto a piece of fondant with Tylos mixed into it. All the letters are attached with edible glue and then I left it out to dry overnight. I have one more logo. This one will match the game Toy Story Obstacles and Adventures, which I'm hand painting. Okay, let's put this cake together. To attach my cake to the board, I've melted some candy melts and I'm spooning it onto the board. And then I carefully pick up my largest cake and I move it onto my board. You have just a few seconds to adjust it before the candy melt set up. Before I move my cake over, I'm adding bubble cheese straws for support. And I push all the straws into the cake. Next, I'm very carefully adding my woody tear and more straws for dowels. My Bo Peep tear goes into place next, and I add four more dowels. And finally, my Jesse tear goes on the top. You will also need a central dowel that will pierce through all of the tears and into the cake drum. I didn't do this because my cake is not moving from this spot. I need to add just a few more details to finish it off. My Buzz tear gets a black fondant border. Woody gets a belt and belt loops. Bo Peep is getting a cute fabric looking border. This actually matches her belt and I tried to make it look like it was wrapped around two times. She also needs a bow. Real quick, I'm going to show you how I made a basic fondant bow. The fondant I'm using has Tylos powder mixed into it and I'm using an impression mat to create the striped pattern. I'm cutting a thin strip of fondant using my pastry cutter and then I turn it over and I begin pulling the ends of the strip in towards the center. I roll up two paper towels and I stick them in the loop so that they hold their shape and I get the center strips attached with edible glue. I turn the bow back over and I begin scrunching up the center which creates the bow look. I use an extra piece of fondant and I wrap it around the center and secure it with edible glue. And there we have a beautiful bow that I'm attaching to the cake with melted candy melts. Next, Jessie is also getting some jeans and a belt and belt loops just like Woody. Okay, my logo is dry, so I'm attaching a flat lollipop stick to the back of it with melted candy melts. And while that is setting up, I'm going to add a few final details, like a ribbon on my board. And I'm giving Woody his star sheriff badge, his belt buckle, and buttons for his shirt. And Jessie also gets her belt buckle and buttons. And finally, I'm pushing the Toy Story logo into the top of the cake. And I also attach my Obstacles and Adventures logo on there too. There it is, all finished with my Toy Story Obstacles and Adventures cake. This is the tallest cake I've made in quite a while. Thank you all for watching, and if you have any questions or ideas for me, please let me know down in the comment section below. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!